Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, just wanted to do a quick video today uh, about how to defeat a missile using energy, basically bleeding it for energy, using air density, um, drag, and um, also talking a little bit about optimal performance of missiles. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to touch on today. It's going to be fairly quick. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm just going to give you guys a quick walkthrough as we do this. I'll explain it in more detail in the tack view section there. So I got the radar on. Uh, you can see the F-15 on the RWR there. I'm just going to go out till we can pick him up. I'm going to lock him up there. You can see he's about uh, 47 miles out there. And we're just going to continue towards him. Um, I'm expecting him to launch his AMRAM around 30 miles, but I'm not going to get a tone for it, obviously. Uh, we'll get it once it goes active. Alright, and I'm going to approach him up to 20, uh, 20 miles, and at 20 miles I'm going to crank. I believe what I'm going to do is go left because I got the mountains on my left here in case things get really hairy. You can see he's cranking left as well. I'm going to crank left along with him so I can keep him within the gimbal limits of my radar here. When I do decide to crank, I'm going to crank at about 20 miles. And I'll probably get the missile uh, incoming tone around 20 miles as well. So you can see him on the radar screen, he's completely cranked to the left now. And 100% there's a missile coming right now. There it is. And so yeah, I'm going to start my crank to the left here. And watch him on the radar there, I'm pushing him to the right side of my radar. I'm just going to keep him right on the edge there. That's the maximum distance that I can push him without losing my lock. Right? So that's that's called keeping him within the gimbal limits. And at 14 miles, I'm going to turn back in. I'm going to invert the plane, and I'm going to fire at 13 or 12 miles. We're at 12 now. I'm going to invert, and I'm going to fox 3. Okay, now I'm going to nose down. Nose down, full speed, full burner. I'm just gonna go straight for the ground. Straight for the ground. I'm gonna pull up so I don't hit the ground here. And I'm gonna turn back into him. And you can see he's dead. I can see a uh, smoke trail in the sky there, so he's dead. It's just a matter of defeating this missile here. And it's behind me, so we're good. So before we hop into the tag view, I just want to review a couple of things just to make sure everyone's on the same page here. Uh, what we're looking at here is an altitude versus air pressure chart. So just really quickly going over this, you can see that as altitude increases, uh, air pressure decreases, right? And as altitude decreases, air pressure increases. There's a higher density of molecules, therefore friction or drag at lower altitudes than there are at higher altitudes okay so just remember that we're gonna use it in the video in a second the second thing I want to talk about is this chart here now this is from my understanding a community made chart on the performance of the missiles at different altitudes and at what range they're effective due to obviously the air pressure that we just talked about so we're gonna be looking at the 120C 
Now these numbers are somewhat accurate, but since uh, the updates for the missiles and the guidance systems, they're not exactly as accurate as they used to be. But for the purposes of today's video, they're going to be just fine. So you can see that if the altitude was 5,000 feet, the effective uh, range would be just under 5 nautical miles is when I would fire the missile at the target if it was at 5,000 feet. Uh, today, the F-15 that we were fighting was at 30,000 feet, give or take. So then I would come over to the AMRAM, which is blue, and I would see that it's just about 12 or 13 nautical miles, which if you remember is when I fired the missile at it. All right, so this is the effective range of the missile and at what altitude it's effective. Okay, again, we're going to use this in the, the TAC view, so just remember this. All right. Uh, now that we've talked about altitude and air pressure and missile performance, we're going to have a look at the TAC view here. So you can see that's me in the red over here. That's the AIF-15 off in the distance there, separated by about 50 nautical miles. We are at 30,000 feet, and if you remember from that graph, uh, the ideal um, range to fire the AMRAM was something around 12 or 13 nautical miles separation. So here we go at around 34 nautical miles, I think he fires off his AMRAM. As we just talked about, that's about double the effective range of the AMRAM at this, uh, at this kind of separation. Right at 34 nautical miles, that AMRAM should technically not be effective at all if I do any kind of maneuver. Uh, he's cranking to his right and my left. You can see I'm just continuing forward, making the assumption that there's a missile coming at me that's been fired in TWS mode, and I'm expecting it to go active at some point during this process, probably right around when I crank, which is what happens, right? So you can see I'm going to close to about 20 nautical miles. Once I get there, I'm going to crank to either the right or the left. doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, I think I go right. No, I go left. Here we go. So I'm going to pull my crank. The reason I go left is only because uh, he went to my left, so I want to crank to the same direction, only because it was easier for me to keep him within the gimbal limits of my radar as I cranked. That's the only reason why I chose that same direction. Uh, another advantage of it, though, is the fact that there's a mountain range over here, and if things got really hairy, I could hide behind those instead of this direction, which is just water and flat terrain. Right, so these are things to consider. So as that missile comes in and I crank to a certain direction, you can see that forces the missile to turn. And the fact that it's turning is going to bleed off massive amounts of its energy okay, as it tries to come in. You can see it's already not going to be able to hit me. Right, I don't even have to do anything else at this point. Just the simple fact that he fired it far outside of the effective range of the AMRAM and the fact that I cranked. A simple maneuver meant that this missile wasn't going to have energy to do anything. I'm going to close my distance here. So another reason that we cranked was because one, it was going to increase the uh, time that the missile had to spend in the air because we were decreasing the closure rate. If two planes are cranking, it's going to be slower their closure rate than if they were going head on together, right? So that's more time for the missile to be in the air, which is more time for you to bleed energy. All right, so we both cranked. I can see this missile on my RWR, so I'm not worried about it. I know it's going to miss. And around the 14 nautical mile uh, range is when I start to crank back into him in order to release my missile at the effective range that we talked about in that graph, which is somewhere around 12 to 13 nautical miles. He's going to also crank back because at this point he knows his missile was uh, was lost. He's going to fire off a second AMRAM. This is when things start to get really interesting because now he's firing an AMRAM at the effective range. Okay, he fired it right around 12 nautical miles. This is now a very dangerous AMRAM for me. Okay, I also have inverted and I fired off my AMRAM. Okay, now let's watch this. Now that I've done that, I'm going to nose down and I'm going to 90 degrees go straight for the ground. And essentially what I'm trying to do with this maneuver here is drag his missile down into dense air. 
if I can pull his missile into dense air, I can kill massive amounts of its energy. And then once I've killed its energy, a slight maneuver will allow me to defeat the missile. Okay? So that's the example of this missile. His missile is going to be the example of the missile getting dragged into dense air. And he isn't going to do that maneuver. And you can see how effective the missile remains at low density air at 30,000 feet. Both fired at basically the same distance, right? So there I am, 90 degrees down. Now usually in this scenario I'd be dropping chaff all the way down. Uh, this is what you should be doing. As you go down there's a possibility that you may be able to establish a beam as you go down. I'm not doing it in this example only because I want to prove that you can uh, defeat the missile via energy, but in any other scenario I would be dropping chaff as I nose down 90 degrees and go straight for the ground. And the reason that we're doing 90 degrees is because that's the fastest way to the ground, right? The fastest point between A and B is always a straight line. And this is A and that's B down here, so a straight line 90 degrees straight down, okay? It's the fastest way for you to get down there and pull that missile down with you. All right, let's just have a look at my missile. You can see he's remaining at his altitude, right? He's not going for the ground. And my missile is going to therefore impact him at around Mach 3. Easy kill, right? And that was because he did not go down. He didn't drag my missile into dense air. Okay, let's have a look at me. All right, remember my missile was Mach 3 when it hit him. His missile's already down to Mach 1.8 as it's being dragged through uh, denser air. And it's gonna come down. I'm gonna go down as far as I can. I'm gonna start pulling up right around here. And that missile's basically been scrapped. It's not gonna be able to have the energy. And look at it, it's like it's Mach 0 0.9, okay? So I've defeated that missile right there, just simply by pulling it into denser air, okay? Because as we talked about in that graph, it was uh, if he wanted to fire it, if he knew that I was going to be at this altitude by the time the missile would have reached me, he would have fired it closer to like 5 or 6 nautical miles instead of 12 or 13 or 14 nautical miles. That would have made his missile more effective based on that graph that we looked at at the beginning. So yeah, his missile is garbage because it got pulled into denser air and he's dead because he did not come down into denser air now if he had come down he would have defeated my missile as well and this battle would have come down to who could have recommitted faster and fired a missile faster now what i would i would want to do is also at this point i don't do it because i know he's dead but i would turn around and i would come and gain altitude again and try to recommit so that if he fires again, I can once again pull the missile down. So the point being that once you defeat the first missile by pulling it down, you want to go up and have him fire at you again. Ideally, you want to fire first. But if he fires at you, then you can you have altitude to pull it back down and repeat this maneuver as many times as it takes to kill him. Okay. So I think that pretty much sums it up, everything I want to talk about. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful at least entertaining, uh, and I'll see you next time.